from the series NCIS Los Angeles, Chris O'Donnell, who I used to do commercials with in Chicago. No kidding. When we were little kids, Chris O'Donnell. Oh my gosh, you should come back and surprise him. On Monday? Yeah. Okay. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> we have three hosts on Monday. Good news. Yeah. Okay, and from the new film Barbershop, the next cut, Cedric the Entertainer is here. Yeah, and a performance? <laughs> a performance by the winner of American Idol, don't cover, <laughs> mute it. Muted if you're not ready, Trent Harmon. Okay, yeah. Now she shocked us all season long on Scandal. Please welcome the fierce and fearless Carrie Washington. <laughs> You've changed. I yes. know. I know. Michael has changed. <laughs> um, I feel like this is Hollywood royalty. I mean, you're both like sort of. No, but I mean, he. I mean, both of you together. Also, we were like in the dressing room. We were like, do you sleep in a freezer? Because you haven't aged a day. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. Yes. I moisturize every night. Well done. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If you thank saw, you. if you saw the clip from 1990, he has gotten a little bit taller. <laughs> taller. Yeah. Hasn't changed the same. Oh. Um, last night, yes. I, I don't want to talk. I mean, I know people are behind. Yeah, if people you are DDR'd. It's like, I don't, was, you haven't watched me at your TV. But now, look at Gelman. He's like, don't yeah. say anything. It was, okay. It was crazy. So I can't be too on the nose. Specific. But that was bananas. I flipped out when I saw the script. When we read it, I was like, well, huh? Yeah, have what? you, have you, you have gone to the, I don't know how the to edge. say it, the edge. You've gone to the edge. Yeah. Have you crossed the line? There was my crossed. favorite, my favorite tweet last night was Shonda Rhimes tweeted, hello, are you there, Olivia? It's me, Sanity. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you wrote it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Answer the question, Shonda. You guys have always had such a connection with your fans through Twitter. Yeah. On a night like that, are you just blowing up? Yeah, it was actually, I had to do a Q&A for this new film confirmation last right. night. And the Q&A started like 10 minutes before the end of the episode, which was sort of a relief for me. Because I was like, I'm not going to have to see the, it, the crazy, huge outrage. Right. So I was just like, good luck, everybody. <laughs> um, right. But it was, it was intense. But to me, I'm always amazed that... Because you know your you, your cast is so good about live tweeting. How can you watch the show <laughs> and tweet at the same time? We try I'm to so watch beforehand. We do. try to watch beforehand. So you know yes. what's coming. So you're not. Yes. So you can focus on the. Tweet. And also, so there's no spoilers because sometimes our show changes a lot in the edit, and you don't want to be like, "Didn't you love that scene? That's not even in the episode anymore." Right. Right. Or that got moved to next week. Right. Or oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay, so we uh, you just mentioned confirmation. Yes. We have to take a commercial break, okay. but when we come back, we're going to talk awesome. more about that. When we yeah. Yeah. That's Carrie Washington in the scene from Confirmation, of course, the Anita Hill story. Um, I remember that like it was yesterday, mm. sitting riveted, and I felt... Um, I had so many emotions yeah. in me at that time, and, and I'm wondering, you were much younger, but do you recall that at the time? I do. I was 14. I, I want to say it's important to me. I know people always say, particularly when they're talking to me, because I think I'm in the film, they say it's the Anita Hill story, but it's it, not. It's really a film about the hearings, and I think that's important because it was the confirmation hearings for Clarence Thomas, who's now a sitting justice, and I, I think it's important because the film is not just about Anita. It's mm -hmm. really about all of these major players, about, about Joe Biden, about Clarence Thomas, Clarence Thomas, about Anita Hill, about all of these people who were in this very complicated period of American history that really changed how we talk about sexual harassment and changed how we talk about gender and how we talk about race and how we talk about power. Mm. And what did you learn that you didn't know, um, you know, uh, in the making of, of the movie? Yeah, I think, um, I think these characters, you know, when we think about Joe Biden or Clarence Thomas or Anita Hill, they're kind of political icons, they're almost caricatures. In the movie, mm. we really struggled to make sure that we were dealing with human beings, like really three-dimensional, complicated people. For me, the big takeaway from the movie is actually these moments where the characters are talking, you start to hear the phones ring in all of the congressmen's offices because that's the American people calling to say, we need something to change, we need something to happen differently. And for me, particularly now when we have an open seat on the court, which who knew that would be happening when the movie came out, right. um, and when we're in an election year, it's just a good reminder that like we have to participate. You know, our, our government's job is to represent us, but if we don't, if we don't show up, then they don't know how to do that.
too often you know? we sit back and just yeah. react to after the fact. That's right, but we're so lucky to live in a democracy yeah, where they, they do their jobs because we put them there. So I, I, to, for me, the, the film is really about process and about how lucky we are that we get to participate in this country. We sure are. And I, we want to point out the confirmation is on HBO yeah. uh, next Saturday, April 16th. Thank next Saturday. You. So I uh, make sure you all see that. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you look like Anita Hill. It really is extraordinary. Well, it was fun for me, particularly, you know, when I play Olivia Pope all year long. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons I was drawn to this character is what would it be like to play a woman in the same city in Washington, D.C., but who is on the opposite end of the spectrum? Like, right. Anita Hill is always the most powerful. I'm sorry. Olivia Pope is always the most powerful person in every room she's in, mm -hmm. um, maybe except for her dad, um, <laughs> when she's with her dad. But, but Anita Hill was not. She was an outsider. She was. She really did not have the power and access that Olivia Pope had, and so I wanted to kind of challenge myself to play somebody who was facing those kinds of circumstances. Did you feel an added responsibility playing someone who um, is still alive it's and terrifying. present? Did you Did you it's spend terrifying. time with her, yeah. or, it's so did, terrifying. or did you I try did. to do your own thing? Well, in the beginning, I met with her uh, doing research because we really met with everybody and read every book because we wanted the film to be really balanced. Um, it feels so real. I think I mean, as a result of I that. did. I spent time with her then when it was time for me to develop the character and she was super arm's length at first because she's very guarded and private as, of as, course as one would yes be. um but it, it was wonderful. It, it helped me to spend time with her because she, her rhythm is so different from mine or from Olivia Pope's. She's so eloquent and slow and meticulous and super smart. Um, so it just, it was great to be able to spend some time with her. Well, we love having you here. I love being here.